Antonio Brown is at it again. Well, um, Mike Mayock has spoken. Oh, and, has he? Um, I will give you a choice. <laughs> the over-under is 12.5 seconds as how long his statement was. You take the over or the under. I'm going under. Okay. Under. Here we go. Terrell Davis, Let's you're go. a winner. You're, we knew that already. You're course, a winner. I know Mike. It was, uh, <laughs> oh, no, is it was 15 seconds? 15? Oh, gosh. Oh, really? Oh, man. Here we go. Let's check it out. Okay, short and sweet. Antonio Brown's not in the building today. He won't be practicing. Uh, I don't have any more information for you right now. And when I have some and it becomes appropriate, you guys will be, all get it. I promise you. But that's it for today. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> it's not in the building today. That means he's not playing Monday, right? He's definitely not playing Monday. No. I, I, I mean, from what I'm hearing and reading and, and watching and, and seeing, um, he will not be playing against the Broncos on Monday Night Football. Which you got to be happy about that. Well, I'm sure if you're a Broncos fan, absolutely. I mean, you got <laughs> – Right? <laughs> yeah, you don't have to deal with Antonio Brown, absolutely. But, I mean, here's – I mean, for, but it's bigger than that to me. It's not about just Denver. This is an unfortunate situation for a guy who was one of the best in the business – and to go about his business the way he's been the last, what, year now? It's just why. The question is why Why do you have to do things like this? You know, you at Pittsburgh. You didn't like it there. You, you basically pushed, forced your way out of there. You go to Oakland. And get paid where they're, where they're willing to pay you. Yeah, willing to pay you the money that you wanted to be paid. You go there, and before the season even starts – you have the foot issue, which, okay, I'll give you that one. You know, that's just trying to get better, trying to, you know, get your legs back. Frostbite, Frostbite. happens. Frostbite. Well, by the way, that's, a, that'd be, the booties, that's though, a right? New, by the way, that's a, that's a new, uh, that's a new great uh, <laughs> bumper sticker. Frostbite happens. But no, I understand. Yeah, but that, was, but that wasn't things... like a, yeah, that, but to me, that wasn't like um, a decision that you refused to show up for something that's team related, Correct. right? Okay, yes. you did that. That was, it was stupid, but it wasn't intentional. Maybe he did want to. Maybe, maybe he did it on purpose not to go to training camp. I don't know. But then you talk about the helmet issue. That to me was was like, all right, get a helmet until you win your grievance with the helmets that you wanted what, that you wanted to wear. Go to practice with your teammates. You know, you, you seemed healthy. You were out there running. Once you see that, then it's like, that's a big issue. It's affecting your teammates. You can't prepare for the game. Everybody has to answer questions about you every single day. That's when the word disruptive starts to come in. That's what you don't need as a team. You know, the good teams don't have players who are just about themselves and just care about the attention they receive. So that was a problem. And then you get this thing where he gets fined, which I'm glad he got fined. That's the way it's supposed to work. It's supposed to work where a player doesn't show up, a player comes to a meeting late, you're supposed to be fined. No matter who you are, whether it's a star or, or a second-year player. But why do you think he views it as an affront to him, though? I don't know. I, I, Did you ever have a player that viewed being fined as a, a personal affront? Did you ever have a teammate? No, thank God I didn't. No, I, and I played with, I played with great players: Shannon Sharp, John Elway, Steve Atwater. Um, you know, you play with him, Rod Smith. We, you know, we played with all these great players, and the one thing that I appreciated now, looking back on it. We had players that could have abused their power. John could have easily abused his power. Not not showed up in meetings, you know, showed up late. Because he's the dude. Because he's, he's, he's the dude. John Elway. But he never did that. And which, me seeing that, I, I mocked, I kind of modern, my patterned my, uh, my leadership after John. So when I saw him not doing that, when Shannon was coming to every meeting, wouldn't show up late, didn't abuse, you know, taking days off. When, when it's in the building and it's cultural, it's a cultural thing, it allows the young players to see that and to sort of mimic that when they, when they get in that position. And so, no, I never, we never had a guy like that uh, that I, we had to deal with who uh, just became about his attention. So then what about Terrell Davis here on the Rich Eisen Show? What about on somebody else's team or another spot? Have you ever heard of a, a physical altercation between player and, and management? When, the, when management came up, to talk or player goes up to management that that's fine not physical heard? okay not physical i've i've heard of you know shouting matches and but okay. that's that's but that's we're, we're, in the, we're in those we're in were those in winning locker rooms uh well yeah <laughs> okay because again <laughs> because I'm trying, that part I'm, yeah that that part is that part is the the human element and that's emotions and that's okay 
if it's a one, you know, a one off, something happens. And a lot of times, even in winning locker rooms, you'll have players who have a disagreement with even a head coach, the GM, the owner, and it it happens. And you'll have that one, you know, one or two players. But that's this is coming on the heels of everything else has already happened. Yes. For more of the Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download the Rich Eisen Show app.